Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Cowboy Ranch Life YouTube channel and today we're talking about a D6H cat bulldozer. We're putting uh, new bushings in the hard bar. That's a, quite a job, especially after you watch the video. The video is going to be about 14 minutes long of actual content. Um, just so you know, we use some different tools here that some people don't have. You can improvise, but it's just a job. No matter how you look at it, it took uh, three guys I don't even know countless hours we didn't even keep track of the hours but uh, just thought I'd tell you guys that it does take a long time and you will need a second person so if you're planning on tackling it this yourself good luck to you but it would really helpful if you would have a second person along to hand you tools underneath there and hold bolts and belly pans etc nonetheless hope you guys enjoy the video stay tuned for more and uh, let's roll tape all right guys so we're working on our d6h and uh, the bushings went out of the hard bar if you can see that they're out in there so we drove the pin out one side but unfortunately due to the way cat manufactured this machine's hard bar which is the piece that goes across from side to side if you can see that there's the hard bar from side to side there that's the piece where the bushing went out unfortunately due to the manufacturing uh, they will not slide out of their slot to be rebuilt with just pulling one pin so you have to pull both pins to get the slot for it to be able to be slid out and uh, co completely open so we're gonna rebuild this dozer uh, we're gonna rebuild the bushings on it but nevertheless we're struggling we put a block under the blade getting it up higher it's a lot easier if you put blocks under the tracks and stuff just gives you a little bit more room to work under here we pulled the belly pans off that uh, definitely helps your access if you need it and uh, nevertheless there we go so we're gonna get started with a skid steer trying to pick it up and manipulate it around so the hard bar falls out on one side Needs to come on in a little bit. I can't. You're up against the blade, so come on in a little. So the goal is, guys, that we're going to try to pick it up on one side pretty much. So if there's two sides of tracks, one side needs to fall down and the other side needs to go up. And it'll twist enough that that hard bar will fall out so we can get it rebuilt. Uh, it's not going to fall completely out of the machine because it does have a pivot point in the middle. But uh, we're trying to just get them to fall out of the track slots. Fork's bending. Looks like it could go a bit more. The floor cleaning pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Alright, if you guys can see that, the hard bar is still not out of there. Clear junk out of the other side. This side needs to be clean, but if the hard bar falls out, this piece here, the whole track assembly should actually fall down if that makes sense because the hard bar is the thing that holds it on the front side on the back side it's all pivoting right into there you can see that but uh, due to taking out the front it should just be able to pivot off the back which makes it fall down which means the hard bar should come up technically all right guys so this we're trying to shove a block under the tracks there skid steers lifting it you can see how much the fork is bent there and the skid steers off the ground in the back So bear with me, this is a little upside down, but if you're looking from the front of the dozer to the back, there's a plate on the belly pan in front of the hard bar, and you'll need to be taking that off because the main hard bar pin 
actually has a grease circ on it. You can see that in there. My camera will focus. But anyway, that's the hard bar pin. Of course, we've got it back in now, but there is a grease circ bank on the back of that, and you will need to take this little plate off and pull that off, otherwise you will break that off and then have to find a new fitting like we did. Which it needed done anyway, probably, but uh, we didn't realize there's a grease zerk bank behind that, and so it broke. But nevertheless, you can find that part, but that's just something you can do premeditative so you don't have to find the part. Got her? Got her! <laughs> Alright guys. Alright guys, so here's in the center of the hard bar you can see right there. The bushings look good, but we're gonna rebuild them probably while we're in there. But uh nevertheless, so we got the bolt broke loose and then by one inch impact gun and then uh got the pin pulled out as you saw. So on to the next process. Mom, no way, no. Mom texted. What'd she say? Mom texted. All right, so we put one, the tracks, we put all the pins from underneath, and one side we are letting down on the tracks, and the other side we're picking up. As you can see here, we've got the tow motor out, which is going to be featured in a later video, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so we're picking up the one side of the tracks on the D6, and... Uh, I think it's got a little bit of weight. I think. Maybe. Possibly. Probably. But we still can't get that hard bar to fall out. It still just wedges in there. Frustrating. Alright, so what we're doing here, if you guys can see this, that is the hard bar you're familiar with. It's called an equalizer bar. Uh, we call it a hard bar, but uh, I guess a professional name probably is an equalizer bar, if uh, that would help you at all in your terminologies. We block the one side on the right-hand side. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get it out of the slots it's in. It's a uh, kind of a bit of pain, to be honest, but uh, you can't run it with the bushings out, so this, here's where we are. So we're blocked. We've pulled all the pins out, all the center pin and the one on each side. Put all three pins out, put the blocks uh, up to the so right hand side of the machine as far as possible up. We're going to lift it a few bit, bit, bit more and try to put some more blocks under it to gain as much room as possible. And then we will let the track assembly on the right hand side back down, which will then therefore keep the uh, hard bar or equalizer bar uh, up and it should fall out of that slot. Really, we're just trying to cock it from one side to the other and try to make it fall out at an angle because if you try to make it fall out straight, it will not. So I've got to say I am unimpressed with the design of this, but uh, nevertheless, so we're gonna see if this works. All right, so we got it out by blocking it and then letting the track assembly back down. But I wanted to explain that you need to uh, unbolt these on both sides so that it loosens it up enough so the track piece the whole track assembly on the right hand side can actually move a little bit which gives us enough room we did that on both sides so it actually can spread the tracks out in the front technically and you can see it actually did use that you can see the gap is wider at the back and narrow at the front because it needed that much of a space all right guys so we've kind of ran into a little bit of a dilemma here uh, this is a d6h series 2 cat dozer and uh that roller is the problem. So the roller was not in here from the factory. What happened was the prior owner installed that roller. And the reason for that, for the track going from the sprocket to the idler over there, was low enough it would wear just due to slack. All right, guys. So then this is, like I was explaining, this is the same as the other side. They've got that extra spare roller in there. And the reason for that, like I said, was because the track sags. That's the design of these machines. Another design that I'm not too fond of, but that is the reason for that extra roller, which is a good idea, except when you're trying to take the hard bar out, as you can see in there. 
that uh, it's right in line with that roller and unfortunately due to that you can't pull the hard bar out if those rollers weren't there on each side we should be able to hook on a chain onto that hard bar and with a skid steer and drag it right out the side and be able to repair it on the workbench but since that's not the case there are three options uh, one cut the roller off but then you would need to reinstall the roller because it's a good idea so that would be option one but we hate doing that also because you can never get it's slick like original and then it just looks ugly uh, option two is take the whole frame off so all that would come off we'd have to detach the blade and the cylinders up there all of that would have to come off and that would be really excessive I mean you'd have to take those bolts there off the inside bolts and those bolts as well so we'd rather not do that if at all possible just due to the pain of having to break the track and the rest of that that's a really intense uh, choice option so we're going to move on to the third option which is what we're going to try first and uh, that is we're going to get a uh, port of power which is a four ton press and we are going to install it from up in there somewhere and we're going to push out the bearing on the other side or the bushing on the other side so let's go to the other side and see how it's going all right guys so here this is this is the port of power with the wand as you can see and of course the jack piece that actually pumps the oil that pressurizes it and this is the one that's actually this is actually the good one but we're trying to replace both of them due to the fact that once one goes out the other one will go out shortly afterwards probably because due to the same fact that they have the same amount of wear so that's why we're repairing this side as well so right now we're just trying to find a piece that's the exact same uh diameter as the bushing itself so that it pushes it out pushes it out in one clean sweep and then we're going to wedge it from there to right there and that ought to be able to pressurize it uh, if you guys are curious like i said this is a port of power it comes with a bunch of tools it's a four ton port of power so you guys can see that that's what we're working on using so hopefully this works so we don't have to resort to one of the other methods methods i already explained all right so we're working on taking it apart as you can see but you can see there's a rotating ball in the center then there are snap rings that hold the bushing in place and then there's a seal on the exterior so right now we're just working on trying to get the snap rings out which is very difficult all right guys so we got it all pulled out if you can see that that's the open cavity where the bushing would bend and the seal so here we're going to pull out and see you so you guys can see the parts uh this is the snap ring they have how it's made is uh we'll start from one end so if you're looking at one end of it it's going to have this seal on it and with a metal ring over it you'll take that all out and then it's going to have a snap ring on the inside of the seal and then with that then it's going to be your bushing with your pivoting ball on if you can kind of see that and actually it's good we replaced this one because it is cracked so uh, that's definitely done and then and then your other snap ring and then it's going to be your other seal so that's how it's kind of placed in there uh, according to that so if you guys are in there that's the reason also if they wear too much like the other side went out uh, they just wore real thin and so therefore we had to heat it to get the snap rings out but we did end up getting it all out guys so there you go so we're going to see how the new one gets is able to put in all right guys so these are all the parts um to rebuild the bushing on the d6h the bulldozer these are laid out on the workbench we showed you or we will show you some pictures of it installed but we thought well we'll break it down for you out here on the workbench so this is the bearing as the cat box says it's, it, it is as they call it the bearing so, uh, that's that swivels and moves and is able to work these are the two snap rings that go on either side, and then these are the seals. So, here's your bushing, here's your seal, then here's one snap ring, here's the other snap ring, if I can hold this, then there's your other seal. So that's how it goes in uh, the tractor hardball. So, yeah, there's uh, how it goes, just thought we'd break it down for you guys out here on the workbench. All right, guys, so we got the pins in, if you can see that. Work pretty good. Uh oh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I would advise freezing them. Uh, we had to do that to end up pounding them in. It did still take some pounding to get them in there, but uh, definitely was a lot easier when you were freezing them because it was not going to happen if they weren't frozen and shrunk down.
and there it is again if you can see that so this is the other side so as long as you freeze them they should go in there they're still pretty tight but uh they'll they fit good and then you could of course get grease around them and that's the main goal there is as long as you get grease around the pins and the bushings that they will be able to hold on so uh and should hold in there for a lot more hours all right guys so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope this was educational a little bit if you have any questions don't forget to comment them down below and my cameraman my brother justice that is most of this youtube channel made sure to for me to tell you why i'm white well we've been grinding corn and this is the corn dust so corn flour really anyway that is why i'm white hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did hit the subscription button down below thumbs up also and go follow us on instagram if you'd like to share with your family and friends we always need all the subscribers and help and support we can and uh, stay tuned for the next one Thank you.